Welcome back to the class. In this lesson, we'll uh, once again play with shapes and colors to create the small call to action that sits between the third, the second and third uh, feature sections. Um, we're pretty much all set, so uh, let's begin. If we take a look at the wireframe, we can see what we need to do here. So we basically have a title, small description, and then the actual call to action button. So let's go ahead and copy these. And actually, I'm just going to copy the text. I'm going to paste that in here. And I am actually going to use these styles. So copy, paste, and copy and paste. And that's going to save us a bunch of time. We're going to align these to the center. And then we're going to grab this button. I'm going to paste it right here. And that's going to say download for free. That's fine. And let's go ahead and select all of these. Shift A to add auto layout. Make sure to uncheck this. We're going to add 32 pixels spacing between items. And then here's what we'll do. We'll add a fill color in the form of our main gradient. And then we're going to add 8 pixels border radius. And then we're going to add 64 pixels lateral padding, 64 vertical padding. And then the only thing left to change is the text color. So let's swap these with white. And we should be good to go on this end. Now I'm also going to make sure that this spans on about, let's say, six columns. And we're nearly there. We just have to adjust this a little bit, like so. And finally, let's add our saved drop shadow to it. And we're pretty much good to go, right? Well, I don't think we should leave it like this because it's pretty simple, right? It kind of just sits there, a standalone box. And I think we can integrate it better with everything that's around it. And to do that, we're going to play around with some shapes and lots and lots and lots of gradients. So grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that's 320 by 64. Add 100 to the radius and add our saved drop shadow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, move it like so, and push it in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, one, two, three, four. So 64 pixels. You can even stop at 60. The idea is you want to hide this uh, seam right here. So you can even do it manually. But I find that using um, a certain number allows me to be very precise. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to duplicate it and repeat the process. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. And again. Now let's select these and duplicate them and move them down like so. And duplicate that again and move them down. So now I'm going to take the middle row and I'm going to push it to the right 10, 20, 30. What do you think? Maybe a bit more? 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So now I'm going to group these. So Command G or Control G if you're on Windows. And I'm going to open up my uh, Gradients plugin. And I'm going to start doing this. Just select an element, choose a gradient, select an element, click a gradient, and so on and so forth. And do the same for 
the rest. Now, how you decide to dress this up is uh, really up to you, but this is, uh, this is how you do it. So now that that's done, select everything and let's create a component. And let's set 16 degrees rotation. Now, I'm going to align this in the middle of my page, and I'm also going to position it somewhere around this area, I think, 120 from the elements above. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. You can eyeball it. Whatever looks good, use it. So now, I'm simply going to move this below my um, my little box here and we can go ahead and align them to the center vertically and if it looks a little bit flat you can go in and you can move these groups around so that the shadow from the group above is cast on the group below it was that hard to do? Not really. You saw just how easy it is to work with shapes and gradients and create very interesting elements. And with this, we can now Command G to group it up, and I'm going to call it Small CTA for Call to Action. All right, call to action done. Now I wanna see your unique perspective on this. Play around with those colors, those gradients, or maybe don't use gradients at all. Um, I showed you one way of doing it, but obviously that's not the only way. So play around, get creative, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Once you complete this section, you're ready to move on to the next one. And the next one is the third and final uh, section for features. And as per usual, we're gonna use a different layout to display this third set. That's happening in the next lesson, so I'll see you there.